another extreme value problem, find the maximums and minimums of f of x equal to 1 over 1 plus sine of x on the closed interval 0 to pi. So as usual, we proceed by taking the derivative. We look for the critical points. Then we're going to take the critical points and the endpoints of our interval, evaluate f on those, and then compare to find the max and the min. So if I take the derivative of our function f, we're going to need the special case of the quotient rule. So that says if I have 1 over g, we have the derivative by just taking minus g prime over g squared. In this case, the derivative of 1 plus sine of x is going to be cosine x, so we're looking at minus cosine x over 1 plus sine of x squared. Now, we want to get critical points, so I need to look where the derivative is equal to 0 or where it's undefined. Where will it be equal to 0 in our interval? Okay, well if I want cosine of x equal to 0, cosine is going to be the x value in the unit circle, so if I have my cosine equal to 0, that means I'm on the y-axis, and we're looking at x equal to pi halves. We would also have minus pi halves, but since we're in the interval from 0 to pi, we only keep the pi halves. For our derivative undefined, that's going to happen where we have the denominator equal to 0, so that'll be 1 plus sine of x squared equal to 0. Square root of both sides gives me 1 plus sine of x equal to 0, or sine of x equal to minus 1. Now we note sine of x equal to minus 1, sine is equal to the y value in the unit circle. So we're looking for where the line y equals minus 1 hits the unit circle. That's going to be at minus pi halves and all the add-ons by 2 pi. But note that's not in our interval, so we don't need to worry about that. So the only points I need to worry about are going to be 0 and pi, our endpoints, and pi halves. Now, let's take a look. We put our points into our original function. What do we get? At pi halves, I get 1 half. And on the end points, we're going to get 1 and 1. So we note we're going to hit our max and mins on every point that's under consideration. At the end points, we'll hit the maximum. And then at pi halves, our critical point, we're going to hit our minimum. OK, if we sketch the graph, it's going to look like this. And so we see that's going to agree with our max and min computation.